everyone, welcome back in another episode of the Wobcast 2.0. Still in pre-draft mode, but getting closer and closer and ever so closer to the 2024 NFL Draft. It's Wobby, joined as always by my partner and co-host Giles, who is as excited, if not more, for the next week and change uh, than anyone else listening or on this podcast. Aren't you, Giles? You're pumped. Oh, I am so pumped. I think there's a lot of things going on. Even our boys in Egan, they got on a plane, uh, I believe this morning, down to my favorite city in the entire U.S., the Big mm-hmm. Easy, uh, mm-hmm. NOLA itself, down to meet Mr. Jaden Daniels. So I'm excited to hear uh, kind of the rep report after uh, after the meeting to see, is this a guy that's going to come suit up in purple? I don't know. It is so interesting to me. So the timing of like these dinners and visits and all of that, there's, I think there's two schools of thought. One is mm-hmm. it's like, well, yeah, he's, he's a, a consensus top 10, seven, five pick. So he's got a busy mm-hmm. schedule. So maybe this is just the soonest they could be there. Or is it the Vikings came across some information that increases the probability that they could take him. And so they're doing more homework on him than they had originally planned on doing. It's one or the other, not both. So, you know, and you don't know unless you are the Vikings or Jaden Daniels. That's the only way you know. Isn't that interesting? It's very interesting. Yeah, I mean, and there's so many different scenarios like that in the NFL draft. I mean, there's so much undercurrent uh, and so much steam on top of it. It's really hard to know which way is up, but uh, yes. it's definitely going to make for an interesting draft night next Thursday. That's for sure. It will indeed. So, all right, partner, the plan for today. I want to talk to you about Justin Jefferson not being at the voluntary offseason program and just in general, the voluntary offseason program and guys being there or not being there. And then... I want to go over some of the latest and greatest information and guesswork that has been in my mind and that I'm machinating on. So those two things Mm -hmm. coming up momentarily. But first, Giles, I sort of stole the floor a little bit last week and went through my three most likely scenarios um, that I think would happen for the Vikings uh, in round one of the 2024 NFL draft. And then uh, we posted on TikTok the 10 players I think are most likely to be drafted by the Vikings. Like if you could power rank likelihood of being drafted by the Vikings, who who are the 10? I did that. But I want to sort of hand the mic over to you and give you the floor, knowing that there still is a week to go and that your opinion could change. And maybe you'll talk about that next week when we record. But with that being said, like what you think is going to happen. And we all kind of know what you would do or what you want Mm -hmm. or hope happens. Um, and yep. you've been pretty clear about that. Like you think quarterbacks, the priority, you think they're trading up and we kind of know who you like and don't like, but you know, what do you think is going to happen? Because you do what I do. You read the tea leaves and you talk to people and, um, you've got a, a sixth sense about all that. So I want to know, and, and people want to know what you think will happen. Like, what is your prediction at this point? Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, I, I am very excited for this because, there's the perfect scenario that I would see for this upcoming draft and what Giles would ideally like to happen as the general manager and the custodian over the NFL draft. Yes. And there's what I think is actually going to happen. Yeah. And I think they're uh, pretty close. They're not the same. They're not the same, definitely, but they're, they're pretty close. So uh, when looking into the 2024 NFL draft in round one next Thursday, starting at whatever it is, 7 p.m. Yeah. Central Time, I think the first... Number one overall pick from the Chicago Bears, they are selecting Caleb Williams. I think yeah. uh, that's that's signed, sealed, delivered. Okay. With the number two pick in the NFL draft, the Washington Commanders select Jaden Daniels. I think okay. there has been rumor that they're maybe off of him, and I think there's maybe discussion that's happening internally, but I think they will revert back to posture, and they're picking Jaden Daniels. Um, I, 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 I think it's been an oscillation, but it, it's going to be Jaden Daniels. He is the second-best quarterback in this year's draft. They're they're going number two, and uh, there's been rumor on whether they'll they'll trade in or trade out of that number two pick. If anything, if they were not uh, picking number two, they'd be picking number one. I know they've made calls to try to trade up number one, and if they can't get Caleb Williams, they're getting Jaden Daniels. For the third overall pick, the New England Patriots, yes, select Drake May. Oh, so they. Stand I think there was also rumor that they'd maybe trade out of this position, but I think with the new ownership, they are going to be selecting a quarterback, and I think they'll be selecting Drake May. 
Yeah. You mean like with, with new leadership, like new head coach and uh, correct. new, new GM, exactly. basically. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, and it's kind of an oscillating position on what, what uh, the Patriots should do because they have a horrible roster right now. Should you go fill out the rest of your roster and then go get a quarterback? Right. But I believe it's a consensus inside that room that although they do have a lot of deficiencies, they believe this is their time to get a guy. Like There's not a lot of other quarterbacks in future drafts that they're in love with, and they like Drake May. So they're going to pull the trigger on that. Not great for the Minnesota Vikings, considering that Drake May is off the board, but I do believe he'll be going number three overall to the New England Patriots. All right. And with number pick four. number four, the Arizona Cardinals will select. Wait, wait, we're getting word. Oh, they oh. have completed a trade oh. with none other than the Minnesota Vikings. I is. currently believe for the pick number 11, pick number 23 in the 2024 NFL draft, a first round pick next year. And I think there will be a few later round swaps. Uh, yeah, I don't know the yeah. exact details of that, but there will be a few other ancillary picks associated with it. But three first round picks plus a few other things, uh, things exchanged. Arizona will get 11 and the Minnesota Vikings are now on the clock with the fourth overall pick. And with the fourth overall pick, the Minnesota Vikings select J.J. McCarthy. All right. Okay. Yeah. The Michigan man comes to Minnesota. I think Vikings Nation generally will be thumbs up on that. Like 75% yes. or greater will be like nice. Right? Yep. Yep. 100%. Okay. I think if if I given uh, my in, my perfect scenario, I think the the Vikings would be selecting Drake May, but I just don't know if it's realistic for us to get to him, considering how high he is going to go and our actual ability to trade up into the top three. I just don't think those two teams are going to trade out. I think they've explored it, but at this point, I think they have solidified both the Commanders and the Patriots their position on drafting a quarterback in this year's draft. Okay, I want to. I want. Let's keep going here. I want to spin this forward because one of my observations was going to be about the New York Giants, who are at pick number six. Giles, mm -hmm. they do have yep. Daniel Jones, who they're paying forty million dollars, I believe, this year. But yep, I think it's fair to say, more than fair to say, that he has been very up and down and really less than confidence inspiring um, so far for the mm -hmm. Giants. And so there is speculation about the Giants' uh, presence or not in the market for a quarterback in the first round in this draft. I am, I am of the mindset that they are in the market. So, mm -hmm. do do you think they are too? Okay, I do. Um, I do. Yeah. So, which is why they needed to jump the Giants at six. Yep. And so, the the Vikings either have to come in with a hammer. And because my concern with with this with that scenario unfolding, not my concern with it, but I think a, uh, something that could deter it is Arizona saying we're okay coming out of four, but we don't want to go back to eleven because we mm. want Malik Neighbors or we want Marvin Harrison Jr. They might have three receivers that they'd be okay with, but they can't be assured that they're going to get that guy at eleven. Now, they mm -hmm. may have designs to come up from 11 to a number to get that receiver. So they trade back from 4 to 11, knowing mm -hmm. they're going to use the capital they get from the Vikings to come back up from 11 to whatever it is. So that could happen. But mm -hmm. that's really my only – like it's a concern for the Vikings if they can't strike a deal with the Pats for, for number three and Drake May. Mm -hmm. If they can't strike that yeah. deal – and the Cardinals get onto the clock with Williams yep. gone, Daniels gone, and May gone, and now the Cardinals are on the clock, and the Vikings are sitting at 11, they're in a tough spot now because I do believe the Giants are in the quarterback market. You know what I mean? Yep. I completely agree. Um, I think uh, you're definitely bringing up an issue that I was concerned with, which is why we had to throw in next year's first round pick to get this yes. done, because I do believe you're going to you're going to have to overpay in order to make it into that position. Yep. Now, there is obviously overwhelming steam right now in the NFL community regarding the pick swap between the Atlanta Falcons and the Minnesota Vikings, considering the tampering that happened with Kirk Cousins. OK, so if you're at eight, our ability to swing this and swing this in a much less bankable way or you know putting in the bag becomes a lot stronger so i would love it if that were to happen if you were to trade i mean you, to be honest there's a scenario in which you could trade eight and 23 to get to number four and not have to include next year's first 
um, because then all of a sudden it's a lot easier for someone like Cardinals to swallow. Um, but obviously that's not a certainty, but I definitely think there is a chance in the next seven days that Roger Cadell could put the, the stamp down and say, Atlanta, you messed up. You now really? are forfeiting eight. Now you got to go to 11. Um, really? I, is it a for sure thing? No, but I think there's a real possibility there. I really do. Okay. Uh, that is um, that would be great news, obviously for the Vikings for a lot of reasons, and and I'm not throwing water on your prediction at all, Giles. I think that could yeah. definitely happen. I am my my uh, submission here is that unlike the last time we recorded together, I think the Giants. I, I'm I'm pretty sure the Giants are in the market, and we've always said the Vikings have the hammer now with 23 and a first next year. They've got the hammer to come up and mm-hmm. beat anyone's offer, but the Giants are like the toughest team to get over now because they're they're already at six. They're already at yep. six. So they can and and if they know they love McCarthy, JJ McCarthy, they can just sit there and wait and wait and wait. And every slot that McCarthy doesn't get taken, he's not going to get taken first. I don't think yep. he's going to get taken second. He could be taken third, but probably like every time he drops, he's just that much closer to the Giants. You know, yep. um, completely agree. And from now, what I've heard, the new uh, New York Giants are very interested in J.J. McCarthy. It's not like, mm-hmm. oh, they need a quarterback. So they're they're hungry. They like J.J. McCarthy. They've hosted him out in New York. Um, I'm hearing word out of that building that there is a strong interest that he's their QB one. So if they really are interested, they might be in a position to start overpaying as well. Um, so that is definitely a concern for us, which is why I think we have to overpay as well in yeah. order to beat them. Now, we, we want to keep this focus, obviously, on the Vikings, but to, to just continue down this tangent of the Giants, mm-hmm. the devil's advocate here for the – because I'm not, I'm not like Daniel Jones or Die guy. I mean, I, I think he's mm-hmm. okay. You know, like mm-hmm. I, I think Daniel Jones puts you in the spot you don't want to be in. You're in no man's land. Yeah. You're, you're good Agreed. enough to win and stuff, but you're not great. And you're not going to be great. Like, so I get wanting, wanting to move off of Daniel Jones and to get on mm-hmm. to JJ McCarthy or one of these quarterbacks. But I, I think JJ McCarthy or quarterback du jour is going to have the same challenge that Daniel Jones has. Who's he throwing yeah. to? Yep. You know? And yep. so if you're devil's advocate in that giants room, you got to be saying, guys, you can, you can swap out Jones for McCarthy if you want, but we still are at the same situation. We got no one to throw to, you know, I mean, I know they got Jalen mm-hmm. Hyatt and Dale, Darren Waller may or may not come back, but now Saquon is gone. So like at some, someone in the room might, might be saying, guys, guys, let's just stick with the quarterback for now. And let's take Malik neighbors or let's take Marvin Harrison jr. Or Brock Bowers or someone. So yep. we'll see what happens there. I think McCarthy to the Vikings as a prediction is a really good one because I think it could happen at three. I think it could happen mm-hmm. at four. I think it can happen at mm-hmm. five. Um, I don't think it would happen at six, but it could happen at seven with Tennessee. So I I, I just think there's mm-hmm. a lot of ways it could happen. I think it's a good prediction, and I think Vikings Nation would be happy with it. Um, yes. Yeah. So – the, the Giants and their quarterback interest was one of my uh, sort of latest information and guesswork bullet points. Um, another one, um, I'm getting conflicting info about the Patriots at three guys. I've had. Oh, I've, okay. Yeah, I, I, I saw their GM, Elliot Wolf, say we are open for business at number three. Obviously, he's going to say that, right? Because he, he wants, even if he's not open for business. What does it hurt to say that? I mean, all yeah. you have to do is sort of smooth it over with whoever you take and be like, nah, we were we were always wanting you and gonna take you at three. You know, that's a smoke we, screen. Yeah. Yeah. So but then I've also heard someone who is very close to this say there's no chance anyone's trading out of the top. None of the teams in the top three are trading out because they all need yeah. quarterbacks and yeah. a quarterback will be there. And every team that wants to trade up is trading up for a quarterback. So he said, no yep. one's trading out of the top three. So I, I just, yep. I'm getting conflicting information from lots of different sources. And I think New England is a complete total, like, shot in the dark. I have no idea what they're doing. That's so interesting. Uh, I, I would guess that I would I would agree with that last comment that I think they're going to stay pat for all the reasons that you mentioned, because quarterback is that important. And I think 
the commonality between at least the top or the, the, the second and third pick is that they have new regimes and those new regimes are under pressure to go find their guy and put their stamp on the organization. So I don't expect either of them to, to want to trade out. I mean, because let's say you're the Patriots or the commanders for that matter. And you're like, all right, we're going to get Malik neighbors or Roma Dunze or Marvin Harrison jr. Because we want to further build out the structure and we'll get a quarterback next year. If you do that, a franchise making wide receiver, I'm going to eat my words here in a second. A franchise making wide receiver is not going to take you to the playoffs and go win a Super Bowl, right? Uh, I, I mean, it showed, so. I mean, yeah. the Minnesota Vikings had the best wide receiver in the NFL. And when you don't have a good quarterback throwing to him, it's, it's all for not. And Correct. I think that's a decision that might get those guys fired. So I think yeah. even from their own self-preservation standpoint, they're going to go get their guy. Uh, they're going to take their shot because they, if they don't take their shot, they're going to get fired anyway. So yeah. um, considering they don't have, <laughs> they don't have any uh, uh, quarterback throwing it to them in either organization. Um, so I, I do expect that to happen. Yeah. Um, my last one here is about Bo Nix. Mm. Mr. Oregon himself. Yeah. Where are you on him? Um, have you done any work on him? How do you feel about him? Um, I, I think he's going in the first round. Like I'm, I'm certain he's going in the first round and I think it's because he may well be worth it, but mm -hmm. the supply and demand is just there. Uh, like yep. there are at least six teams who need a starter yep. and Bo Nix is easily one of the most appealing options, one of the top six ap appealing options for a franchise who needs a starter as they assess the draft and the remaining free agents. So I think he's going in the first round, which means the Vikings are a team to at least talk about with regard to Bo Nix. So what are you feeling about him in general? And what if the Vikings got Bo Nix? So I think about a month ago, if you're to rewind the clock, I was not necessarily that high on Bo Nix, um, not because I like wanted to hate on him, but I was much higher on other quarterbacks. Right. So um, opposites uh, attract there. So, you know, exploring the, the Minnesota Vikings world in which they cannot trade up and actually get a quarterback, which is a realistic one. It's not a guarantee that we can trade up. There's a lot of things that have to fall our way. Yeah. If you were not able to get a top four quarterback, assuming that it's Williams, Jaden Daniels, uh, May, and then McCarthy, your real choices are between Michael Penix Jr., Spent mm -hmm. or Spencer Rattler, or Bo Nix. And uh, from what I'm hearing from the Minnesota Vikings room is that they were not necessarily impressed with Michael Penix Jr. when they had the all-day practice where they, they had him throw 700 passes, essentially. And so if you take that off the board... I would much rather have a Bo Nix and a Spencer Rattler. And, uh, you know, that's my initial gut reaction. And then I started testing that theory. And when you look into it, he actually did much better in college than I think people give him credit for. I mean, he played at Oregon, for God's sake, right? Uh, but yeah. when you look into, into it um, and you explore all the areas that you want a quarterback to be good in the NFL and you translate that and you look at, you know, what, what that looks like in, in the college league, went under pressure last year. Bo Nix was number one in the entire NCAA football in PFF grade. He had a 91.5. Oh, wow. He was number one in completion percentage. He was third in touchdowns and he was first in passer rating when pressured among all quarterbacks. So when you think about uh, a quarterback that can thrive in the N NFL, there nothing is ever perfect. I mean, we came from a world where we had to try to perfect a scenario with Kirk Cousins. When scenarios were perfect, he was great. When they weren't, he wasn't. Mm -hmm. If we're trying to improve beyond that, I think Bo Nix could actually be a pretty good guy. I mean, he's pretty accurate considering his completion percentage, his passer rating, his PFF grade. I mean, he had a lot of touchdowns. I don't know. I like, is he my first choice? No, but if we can't trade up, I would actually be willing to take a Bo Nix uh, in the first round. I would. Um, and I think that because we need a quarterback. Um, and I think if you were to, for example, get him at 23, I think there's a scenario in which you draft him. He's bad. And you still don't lose your job because you're not taking the third overall pick a swing on a quarterback. You're taking a swing. And if it doesn't work, I still think there's grace on that. I really do. Maybe, yeah. you, you know, check me on that if that's the wrong position. But I still think it's worth a swing um, considering his untan or intangibles there. I think you're 100 percent right that taking Bo fight Nicks me on at, it. Yeah. Taking Bo Nix at 23 is not a hitching our 
our trailer, our wagon to Bo Nix, like do or die Bo Nix. Mm-hmm. You're not doing that at 23. It's it's the 23rd pick. Like, mm-hmm. I yep. mean, like you get a starter at 11. Or what, what if what if you trade back at 11 to 15 or 14 or 16? You st- and you get the Oregon mm-hmm. center or a starting guard, yep. you know, and then a second round pick or a couple of thirds, and then Bo Nix at 23. I mean, you miss out on May, who you really loved. You didn't love anyone else. This is not a bad alternative. And if it's not, not right, bad at all. yeah, you live to see another day and take another swing at a quarterback in two in two or three years. So I don't know, man. I to me, quarterbacks, first round quarterbacks are like cars. They're not like like fresh produce. And what I mean by that is yeah. generally you're not just feeling around for the fresh produce and you're okay with this apple, that apple, I don't know, whatever. I'll just take whichever one. No, like this is a car. Like you're you're investing in yep. this and you gotta drive this for like four years. Okay. So yep. you can't like every car on the lot. You only yeah. like a few. So if when yep. it's time for you to pick the cars on the lot you liked are gone, you can't just go to the one you liked a little bit. You got to just go to a different lot. You know, try again yep. another time. And so that's where I am a little bit on Bo Nix. I also think there is a a draft order argument to happen here. Um, when you explore, I mean, uh, all of the the most recent drafts. And you look at the the first quarterback taken, the second, third, fourth quarterback taken, um, the the fourth and fifth and the sixth quarterbacks are typically taken outside of the first round, right? You have guys that are like, yeah. um, that uh, who's the quarterback from Tennessee? I'm blanking on his name, Mister uh, Mayo and Hend- his coffee. Um, Hendon, Hendon no, no, Hooker. that was from the Lions. Um, the other guy that went to oh, Tennessee, oh, you mean or, the, uh, Titans. Uh, the, the Titans. Titans. I thought yeah, you meant sorry. the University of Tennessee. Um, are you talking about? Um, oh, no, yeah. Come on. Come on, Will uh, Levis. What's his name? Right? Will Levis, yeah. Uh, he was considered to be a, a top 10 talent, and all of a sudden he fell out of the first round, right? Yeah. And I feel like that happens a lot where if they don't go in the top 10, then they're not going in the first round, right? Now, there are some scenarios where quarterbacks fall, and they're still taken in the first round. And the reason I'm bringing up this argument is actually you know, based on historical track record, which I don't think should necessarily dictate decision, but if you look at a, a look mm-hmm. back, those guys hit. Almost every time. Yep. Like when you look at the top top guys, like they either hit or they don't. Yep. Uh, and then they either fall out of the first round or they fall the middle of the second round. When they fall into the middle of, or I'm sorry, middle of the first round. When they fall into the middle of the first round, those guys have hit. When you look at someone like Patrick yeah. Mahomes, he fell to 10. He hit. If you look at someone like Deshaun Watson, he fell to, uh, was it 10 or did he fall it to 12? Yeah, I forget like where that. he got taken. Mm-hmm. You look at a Lamar Jackson, fell to 18, I think. Somewhere in there. Like, mm-hmm. Honestly, when I look at the the quarterbacks that fell but are still taken in the first round, I can't really think of any that have not hit. I mean, now if you go ways back and you go to like someone like Christian Ponder or something, that's a different story. But like in in recent past, there's a much higher hit rate on the on a first round quarterback yep. um, that fell a little bit the one versus the ones that fall to the second or third round. I don't know. Yep. So like when you think about a Bo Nix, like could he fall into that category? And I think. There is a difference maybe between a Bo Nix and a Christian Ponder because I think you would maybe agree. I don't think the Vikings truly wanted a Christian Ponder, but they put themselves into a position where they needed a quarterback and they couldn't trade up. And they're like, well, I guess I got to take Ponder. I think a lot of Minnesota Vikings fans, they look at that the wrong way. They're like, oh, why did they pick him? Because they forced them, they they didn't plan properly. If we're being honest, they 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 accidentally fell into that where they didn't have a backup plan versus really pounding the table for Christian Ponder, right? So that was an overreach. That's not a oh he fell, let's grab him, right? That was a different scenario. So let's Correct. toss that out of the out of the scenario. And I bring all this up to say I think there is even a a mental component here to quarterbacks that were in the top five that still that fell, but there is still first round talent. Now they have something set out to prove. Right. Yeah, and yeah. they still have some confidence versus when you fall to the third round, you're like, well, literally every team in the NFL passed on me twice or three times. Now you're kind yeah. of defeated. You feel like an afterthought versus, oh, you didn't take me. I'm going to go. Sh- I'm going to go show you. Right. Um, yeah. So I think there's a mentality thing there that could be discussed here. So if if the board does fall this way, we're not able to trade up. I would not be opposed to taking Bonex. All right. 
I love it. Uh, Joe Flacco, another good example of your theory, Giles. He went 18th yes. overall. Yes. Uh, Drew yep. Brees went right away in the second round. Um, you know, so yep. some some guys uh, fit that mold. I think, uh, and you're right. Deshaun Watson was the 12th overall pick. Yeah. So, I I heard Charlie Weiss on NFL on Sirius NFL Radio say okay. about Bo Nix that he's accurate and he had a really good touchdown to interception ratio. And he also mentioned his, his performance under pressure, you know, and it, this is what kind of got me thinking about Bo Nix um, on top of just the steam about him, um, you know, be, where's he going to go? And some teams are mm-hmm. probably higher on him than most people think. So I, I don't know. There's something about Nix, the idea of the Vikings ending up with him that I like, like I, I can already tell, if Bo Nix is the selection, whether it's 11 or 18 or 23, whatever, I'm going to like it more than most. Like, I'm going to be one who's se- like, I'm going to be selling it. I'm not going to be yep. one who needs to be sold. And it, it yep. sounds like you're in the same camp there. I completely agree. And, and I and I would uh, kind of second that other comment. I do think there's going to be a lot of Minnesota Vikings fans that will be furious. Not because okay. I think they inherently hate Bo Nix, but I think they're going to be angry that, oh, of course, the Vikings didn't trade up again. And they don't understand all the different dynamics and variables that go into something like that. It's not just simply desire. There's a lot more than desire that's required to go trade up in the ter- uh, top three. Uh, yeah. Even when you have a, a rich portfolio to go send. There's a lot more at play. So I think yeah. there's going to be plenty of Vikings fans that will be upset. Um, and I think they also, you know, inherently don't love Bo Nix because the college he plays for. And it's easy to 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 slam quarterbacks that are not in the top three because they're like, well, he's not J.J. McCarthy, so he must be bad. Or he's not Dre yeah. May, Drake May, so he must be bad, right? And they play the, if it's not one, it has to be the other. Uh, and I think, you know, there's definitely a route for him to be successful, especially a location like Minnesota. Yeah. No, it's weird. If you think about, the 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 prospect of JJ McCarthy as a pro quarterback and then the prospect of Bo Nix as a pro quarterback. I mean, they've really they're like this, man. I mean, everyone talked about Bo Nix as a first round quarterback for a couple of years, and now all of a sudden he's like on the fringe. No one talked mm-hmm. about JJ McCarthy as a first round quarterback his whole career until like the last two months. And now everyone yep. thinks he's – it's so weird how that, that dynamic works. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, we'll be interesting to see how it plays out. I, for one, will not be disappointed if the Vikings end up with Bo Nix. Neither will Giles. And we will sell Vikings Na- – we will sell hope to Vikings Nation about that. Um, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I want to switch gears, Giles, unless you have any draft-related things you want to get out there before we switch gears here. No, let's talk about the next most important element is the guy that uh, the new quarterback is going to throw to. Yes, Justin Jefferson. Okay, um, not at voluntary offseason, the Vikings voluntary offseason program. Um, and I just got to thinking about this and was wondering how, how you and how we felt about it. Not not just specifically just Justin Jefferson. Would, would it be great if he was there? Yes, of course. You You want everyone there all the time perfect world. Everyone's there all the time. Everyone practices all the time. No one gets hurt ever, but this is not how it works. Mm -hmm. The off season program is indeed voluntary. Um, Every team has a mandatory mini camp, but everything else is voluntary. When someone is missing guiles from that, I want to know your, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I've got an opinion on this because I've been thinking about it a lot. I'm kind of shoot. You're shooting from the hip a little bit. So okay. I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you first and I'll, I'll come in with how I feel about it. But someone not being at the voluntary offseason program, like how do you feel about that? And you can gear it toward like an important player. Like if okay. you're a marginal player, you should definitely be there, right? You should be doing everything you can all the time to make the team. I, I get that. I'm talking yep. about like no-brainer starters, star yep. players, I, I even want to throw quarterbacks out of this. Quarterbacks should be there, um, yep. in my opinion. You're the leader. Even yeah. if they're at a contract impasse, they don't want to assume the risk of injury, be there and do what they call the lock-in. Be there, but mm-hmm. don't practice. You should be there. Yep. So let's throw quarterbacks yep. out, and let's throw marginal players out. I'm talking about Justin Jefferson. I'm talking about Mike Evans. I'm talking about you know whoever, Aaron Donald. When they're not there, what are you thinking? So, uh, 
I, you know, shooting from the hip here, I do think that there are uh, different categories of players based on position. Um, you know, like I put wide receivers into a certain category of people because it takes a certain a certain personality to play a receiver. Now, as with anything in life, I think there's a spectrum. You have extremes in both ends ends of the spectrum. You have people um, like we'll call it Stefan Diggs, uh, or uh, I don't I don't necessarily want to put Stefan Diggs and Antonio Brown into the same category, but like maybe a little bit more of a a controversial player from a a personality standpoint. And then people like an Adam Thielen who are, are very animated, but it's their love of the game, right? They're not, they're not drama Queens for the sake of being drama Queens. They want to win. I think they all want to win, but there's, there's a spectrum to players. And I think, when you're thinking about people sitting out of mandatory uh, training camp, I think there is two things that make that happen. Uh, and one more than the other one would be if you're in a contract dispute, I think those players say, well, fix it. Like they just have this, like maybe a higher sense of self that makes it happen. Um, now I don't think that's necessarily at play here with Justin Jefferson, but I do think that does obviously happen. And the second is like, I'm good enough. Like it, We'll figure it out. Like it's a, such a strong confidence in their ability to play that they don't think they really need to practice. And if you're already a premier pro player, I can't necessarily argue with you. Like if you're Justin Jefferson, whether you're there or not, doesn't really affect your style of play. You're going to be great. And, you know, if you don't want to get hurt because you got a contract, I, I definitely understand that. Right. It, it's a, a bit of a leverage point. Like I don't think he's sitting at home going like, mm, 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 I'm not going to step on the field unless you get there. Now, if it turns into that, that can be another story, but I do not believe that's where we're at today. I think a lot of people are trying to make it out into that. I just think he's doing something else. Like, I'm good enough. I don't need to be there. I get it, it, like, I let the other guys get more playing reps. I'm fine. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't view this as, a, as, a, a, as him crying at home that we haven't given him a contract or you know, there's something else going on. Yep. Yep. I agree with you. I, I to me it is I have more tolerance for this Giles when it's a really good player who has been productive mm-hmm. has generally been a good citizen for you mm-hmm. and by yeah. good I, I mean like a good teammate and player a good guy to have on the roster so he's 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 been good yeah. he's been productive and he's outperformed his rookie contract I've got some tolerance for that you know because these mm-hmm. guys. The rookie contracts, there's really not much negotiation that goes on there. It's like you, you get drafted and you you get a slotted contract, basically. And yeah, you know, it's team friendly and there's really nothing you could do there. Where where mm-hmm. I really lose patience and don't really have tolerance for not showing up to the voluntary stuff is the guys on their second, third plus contracts, where it's like you s- you you like knowingly signed this and like yeah i get it you outperformed it but like this is what you negotiated for and yep. signed you should be there yep. <laughs> yep you know and yeah and technically the the guys on rookie contracts also signed it negotiated but it's just there's a little less choice very there, different I think. yeah C- correct like, those are very you, nominal differences yeah it's yeah. like yeah i get it man you you outperform the contract and you're a, want a new one but like you signed this you should be there at least you be it. there you know yeah. so i i just don't even really think twice about jefferson not being there would yeah. it be great if yep. he was there yeah it would be it'd be great um <laughs> But there's a good chance the quarterback that's going to be thrown to Jefferson all season isn't even there yet, right? So I I think that's a, a large likelihood for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, I just wanted to talk about talk that through with you and see how you were feeling there. Uh, you know, um, I, if you're on that rookie contract, I got more tolerance for it. If you've signed your second, third contract, man, I think you should be there. So. Yep, I I completely agree, and I think uh, I think the rest of the locker room feels the same way as us as well. Because I think yeah. guys inside the locker room can determine when it's one thing or not the other. Like, oh, you're shooting a commercial down in Atlanta, be there, like no big deal. Versus like, oh, I know you're a little hot headed about your contract and you're not here. Like, come on. Like, yeah. I think teammates pretty clearly understand that. And I think that's how it spreads throughout the locker room. So um, when it's nothing, it's nothing. But when it's something like, come on, like yep. you're now being a distraction for your team. And I think the why behind the what is usually pretty clear across all the guys in, on the 53. Yep. All right. Um, that's it. That's all I had. Uh, s- except one more little thing I wanted to bring up that I just caught before we started recording. Um, okay. Did and I know you've been traveling this week, so you may yep. not have caught it yet. But you're you've got your ear to the ground, so I'm guessing you did see this. 
did you see that Tom Brady was in the headlines in the news a little bit? Okay. Did you? I did. Uh, I definitely uh, did. Yes. So he's, you know, the bat phone is available for Tom Brady, Giles, if a team needs it down the stretch. I mean, to be honest, I am absolutely here for that. If you draft the quarterback, <laughs> like, let him sit for a year and let Mr. TB12 come on over, Red Rover, to the Egan uh, TCO Performance Studio. I mean, come on. Oh, like, I was, I was in Vegas this week, you know, so... Uh, you know, brought a full uh, suitcase full of cash, uh, uh-huh. laid down some lines, you know, can either confirm or die that I have a little bit riding on this. So, uh-huh. Tom, pre- please help a brother out. Um, but I was with a bunch of guys out in Vegas at a recycling show this week. And, you know, the, that's definitely the hot topic right now is the draft and who's going to take who. And, you know, I talked to a whole slew of different people. I talked to a guy named Lee. He's a Browns fan. He's from Ohio. And, you know, he's in love with where they're going. He could not say higher praise about Kevin Stefanski, by the way. They're in love with mm-hmm. Kevin out there. Um, yeah. But I uh, talked to some, some, some Cowboys fans, some Saints fans. Uh, you know, I got, talked about a guy, in, uh, Scott. He lives in Houston, but he's a Dallas fan. Like they, They're all talking about their quarterback situations. Yeah. And all of them, all of them would agree that if you can get Tom Brady, you do it. <laughs> Like even like, oh, you know, we got the, we got, we got a brand new quarterback. We got CJ Stroud and the Texans. Sorry, you're, you're benched for a year. We're letting Tom Brady run the ship for a second. Everyone's yeah. doing that. Like that's yeah. a no brainer. Uh, and I think the Minnesota Vikings are no different. Um, and like, to be honest, well, that I don't actually mean this, but I'm going to say it out loud anyways. Even if you draft, let's say JJ McCarthy, let's say he's having an amazing year and you get to week 12, um, I'd be willing to say, hey, you need to take a seat for the rest of the season because Tom Brady's oh, going to come God. in. You can start again next year. <laughs> oh, the best. I just loved it, man, because I am with you totally. And it's like the first quarter of the game, or it's like, you know, hole three of an 18 hole golf round of the, mm-hmm. like the Brett Favre, like, is he going to come back again? Is he going to come back again? Is it like until Brett Favre was like, he, like, I mean, it wasn't even that many years ago when everyone was still like, Brett, give Brett Favre a call. Give Brett. It's yeah. like Tom, like that's where we're at with Tom Brady. It's just we're on the very early end of the spectrum of that. It's like every year for the next five years, it's going to be like, oh, quarterback got hurt in week 11. Call Tom Brady. Call Tom Brady. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and like, even if, uh, even if, if you're Tom, he's so, he's got so much going on with yep. his, his business, his podcast, his sponsorships, all that. Even if you were, in Tom Brady's camp and you're like, by the way, I'm totally done. I'm not playing like 0% chance I could ever play. I got, they don't, no one knows it, but I got my knee replaced and I can't even move. Mm -hmm. Like it still makes sense to say what he said because every November you're going to get brought up and talked about. And it's just you in the news cycle again. It's brilliant. It's great marketing. It's instant PR. I completely agree. Now I do think, and this has been confirmed privately in a few circles. He wants to win a third championship. With a third team. A third team, yeah. Mm. A third team. No one else has done that. There's other teams that have won two with two. He wants to win three with three. Yeah. I you know that's true. I you do not get to where he's at if he doesn't. <laughs> uh, yeah. And Well, I mean, I hope he doesn't, but unless it's with the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, man, I, th- I, I chuckled yeah. at that. Um, yeah. and, I'm, and like you, man, I'm here for it. Give me TB12, yeah. baby, all day long. All yeah. day long. Uh, hey, uh, and he's a Michigan uh, sorry, man. Sorry, Darnold. Yeah. He's a Michigan he's, man, he's exactly. A Michigan he, man, him and McCarthy. Come on now. Oh, I didn't really think about that. Like that'd be a perfect guy to usher in uh, mm-hmm. the new era of JJ McCarthy. Learn under, learn under uh, Tom Brady for a hot second, and then go to work next year. We've gone totally off the rails. Totally off the rails. We've this is evolved. what's happening. No, I need to change my <laughs> my prediction. You know. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, I think that should do it. I think that should do it. Everyone's laughing at us now, guys. We gotta we gotta wrap. Uh, uh, seriously though, over there. <laughs> I know, I know. But seriously though, we yeah. thank you all for listening and watching uh, the Wobcast 2.0 on behalf of Giles. This is Wobby. We're signing off for now, but before we do, we remind you to like, follow, and subscribe to Wobcast 2.0 wherever you do that with all your other favorite football content and podcasts. Apple, Spotify, uh, Google Play, YouTube, uh, TikTok, Instagram Reels, all the places. Come and find us and join the conversation. Once you do that, we'll see you there. On behalf of Giles, this is Wobby signing off for now. This edition of the Wobcast is over, and until next time, Skull Vikings.